Kia everyone. So, in order to talk about the persistence of our grasses species and their different nitrogen regimes, uh, I'm going to talk about one experiment that was shown in 2014, and I'm going to tell you guys what happened after five years in that experiment. Right? So, those are the results for the agronomic year 1920, right? The graph shows the accumulated dry matter. So, in the end part, so for the harvest that um, occurred by October 2019, we can see like a huge nitrogen effect when water was available in the system. And the harvest that has the letter R on top of it, uh, we allow the plants on purpose to reach very uh, advanced uh, reproductive stages with seed heads because we wanted to check what would happen to quality when plants reach at that stage for the vegetative and reproductive parts well, with and without nitrogen. And the W letter shows that the increase in accumulated dry matter was very low, marginal, because there was a lack of water in the system. Now, when it comes to the vegetative dry matter yield, we have still the nitrogen effect uh, for the harvest that happened in October 19, but the letter S shows a species effect. And that square is Coxfoot, which had a higher vegetative dry matter in that part. That happened because when all species went fully reproductive, Coxfoot still managed to have green leaves on the base of it. And that is, the idea of that is represented on the, in this image. As you can see, like the vegetative parts, and in the bottom of it, all the green leaves, right? So now the results uh, for the reproductive harvest, like the quality. So the, in the metabolizable energy, you can see that Coxfoot had a higher ME for the vegetative and reproductive parts, and nitrogen did not affect uh, the ME. For the fiber content, both ADF and ADF, Coxfoot was in the group that had like the lowest fiber for the vegetative components, but in reproductive components, ryegrass had the lowest fiber content. Vegetative components had lower fiber content than reproductive ones. And in protein, we had no difference in species, but nitrogen had an effect on the protein content. Um, the vegetative parts again, had a higher protein content than the reproductive ones. So our conclusions is nitrogen fertilization that increases protein and vegetative dry matter yield. Coxfoot superior quality and vegetative dry matter. Uh, it is the most persistent species for environments with uh, water and nitrogen restrictions. So this experiment happened in Ashley Dean Research Station in Lincoln. If by uh, any reason a farmer wants hay, so Coxfoot would be the most recommended species here. And reproductive stages mean a big drop in pasture quality. Now for this five minute talk, I did show like the quality results for that harvest only, but for the whole year, we draw the same conclusions that Coxfoot still had a very uh, high quality in this production environment. And acknowledgements to institutions who provided funding for this project.